Okay. Parting of the waters here. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want to discuss some important lines that we need to hear as Christians. And so I trust as we share from 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, what we're going to talk about something that the world looks at as being pretty foolish, and uh, that's preaching. And so it's amazing how uh, people discredit preaching, and yet God uh, emphasizes the importance of preaching. Okay, and so got something going on here. Need keys. All right. So, First Corinthians, chapter one, verse seventeen. We'll begin our reading, and uh, it's very, very important that we uh, listen closely to what we have to share concerning preaching and. And that's why I want to talk to you tonight about the importance of preaching. This morning is the importance of the blood, and tonight the importance of preaching. Verse 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, was the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Notice uh, on down to verse 24, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. And so here we have some very important verses. And it interesting that God refers to preaching as foolishness. And again, he emphasized the fact that that's the way the world looks at it, that it's foolishness. But God has chosen the foolishness of preaching to open a door to heaven. So one thing that the world definitely needs today, and I know people are talking about what does the world need today, and someone might say, well, it needs a cure for COVID. Okay, well, that, that would be nice. Someone else might say, well, it, 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 we need more gas. We need more petroleum products. Someone else might say, well, we need more solar power. And someone else might say, you know, that we need a new president. Someone else might say, you know, we're going down this, all the lines that people might say that we need. But really, and, and of course, there's a song that went on that we, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And uh, folks, what the world needs right now is preaching. Good, sound preaching. And so we find that this is very important in this day and time, that people need to hear preaching and preaching uh, of God's word. So God stresses this importance in preaching his word. But he goes on and it makes it clear that we all need to look at the importance of preaching. And I could simply ask you this, do you pray for your preacher? I hope that you do. But then another question I want to ask you, do you ever preach? And then someone might say, well, I'm a woman, so women, women aren't supposed to preach. Uh, well, actually women aren't supposed to pastor, okay? And so... We are all supposed to share the gospel. That's what preaching is, is sharing the gospel with others. And of course, a pastor is going to be a preacher because that's just tied in with pastoring the church. So those something else. We see the importance of preaching. And so as we think about that, we want to look a little closer in just a moment. But before we go any further, I want to ask God's blessing upon the message for tonight. And Ron, would you like to pray for us? Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Father. I ask you to be with Jerry with the work tonight. Heavenly Father, I ask you to be with the kids for this summer, with summer break being on now, and the summer coming on. And Heavenly Father, I like to be with us, with the Republican, the Republican Party, and things in the White House. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And so here as we look at the scriptures again, and I want to use 1 Corinthians 1 18 as our text. Of course, we just read it a moment ago. It says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. 
And so it's amazing what God can use. And you've heard it said maybe this way too, that uh, great is the mystery of godliness or God, uh, his workings are so mysterious and we can go on on different lines that point to that. And so we see that God has chose the foolishness of preaching. And so when we think of preaching, the first thought may come to mind is the, the man uh, of preaching. So who's the man of preaching? And when I say it, uh, again, I want to emphasize the fact that I think every one of us should be sharing the gospel with those that we know, those that we meet, uh, those that we come across. And it tells us concerning the man of salvation in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, it says this, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And so who has saved us? Folks, Jesus saved him. It wasn't the Pope. It wasn't the president. Uh, it wasn't some other pastor. But it was Jesus that saved him. And so I'm going to heaven because of what Jesus did for me. It wasn't because I got baptized or I got baptized in the Baptist church. It wasn't because of that. It wasn't because I've received communion. And I can go on down the list all night. It wasn't because I did some extra super good works or whatever. And it's not because I tithe and give to the work of God. But we see that the men of salvation says, Who has saved us? It's Jesus. He is the only way to heaven. And he has saved me from hell and saved a place for me in heaven. And I emphasize that this morning. And he called us with a holy calling. And isn't it neat when you think of that, the call that was given to us to help us to understand the importance of salvation. And it was a, as it says here, a holy calling. In other words, if you place it was from God himself that he gave us the calling to salvation. And then it said, not according to our works. And again, how many times do people brag on, look at what I've done, look at what I've accomplished. Boy, isn't that great? You want to pat me on the back? Go ahead. You know? uh, it's on his works. It's his works that are getting me to heaven, not my works. And again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying, okay, you're Christian, so you don't need work anymore. <laughs> no, because we are a Christian, we should want to work and do things for God, not to earn our salvation, but to help others to find salvation and to live a life that would point people to our Savior. And so he goes on and he says this, but according to his own purpose. You ready? God has a purpose for every one of you. There's something that you can do for God that no one else can do. God has a special purpose, a special will for you. Isn't it fantastic that God loves you so much that he gives you something that you can do? Again, not to make us worthy of salvation, but to help us so that we can share with others that they might find Christ as their Savior too. And he says, which was given us in Christ Jesus. This is amazing. Before the world began. <laughs> You ready? Jesus knew that you was going to be born before the world was even created. Isn't that staggering? We fail to realize and then that God, he is infinite, but we are finite. Because he's infinite, he's beyond our wildest imaginations, the things that he knows, but because he is God, he knows everything. Wow, what an amazing God. And then something else that we notice, not only is the preacher, if you please, or the person that's sharing the gospel. Not only should he be a person of salvation, in other words, he should be saved himself, but he should be doing what he can to get others saved, but also that he should be a person that's separated from the world. And again, it's, it's so sad how many preachers and how many churches have become just like the world. They have become entertainment centers, and we can go on and on. Again, there's nothing wrong with good gospel singing. And nothing wrong with good uh, uh, instrumentalists and so forth that are playing for God's glory. And we can go on down the list. There's nothing wrong with good acting and other things that people might be able to do. As I, I pointed out several times that Levi and Jen were our very first Joseph and Mary 20 years ago this December. And now they're husband and wife and, and uh, having uh, their own children now. And instead of a little baby doll that's supposed to be Jesus, you know, of course, it was just pretending. But what I'm saying that whatever... Uh, God has given you, we are to be different than the rest of the world. And there's so much that we can do and that we should do. Isaiah 52 verse 11 puts it this way. And again, we shouldn't be like the world, but we should do what we can to reach the world. 
And so it says here, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence. Touch not the unclean thing, go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. And so the Lord makes it very clear that we're to depart from the ways of the world. That we're to depart from things that would pull us down. That we shouldn't act and dress like the world, if you please. We should be different. And we shouldn't talk like the world. And it's so sad how many Christians, uh, well, for lack of a better word, but they curse and they shouldn't curse. They say things they shouldn't say. And how sad. And I wish I didn't have to say anything about that. But folks, you know it's true. I wish I could say that. I've never heard a curse word in our church. The folks, I have. I've heard some people just get upset, not thinking. All right, we've had people come in that uh, aren't even Christians. Uh, I had one here today that has never accepted Christ as Savior, and uh, we've been dealing with them for some time. And but what I'm saying is their language is different because they're of this world. But it's really sad when a Christian sounds just like the world, and that shouldn't be. We should be separated from the world, as it says here. We should depart. It says it repeats it: depart ye, depart ye. Referring to us departing from the ways of the world. Be different. It says, be ye clean. And especially those that bear the vessels in the church, if you please. And so again, we need to be different and separate from the world. And then something else. The man of supplication. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 says this. And again, it says, praying always. Uh, folks... As, as I read that, you know, and I reflect on myself, I think, could I always just say, you know, folks, I pray always. And, uh, and could you repeat to me the same thing? Say, well, preacher, I pray always. But, you know, when we, we talk about that, do we really pray always? And, and maybe I should rephrase it somewhat. Do you pray a lot? Okay. And when it says pray always, I think it's referring to the fact that we should always be in the spirit of prayer and that at a moment's notice without even thinking, we find ourselves talking to God. That's the way it should be. But it says pray always with all prayer. In other words, praying for everything. Have you prayed for our president today? Have you prayed for our governor today? Have you prayed for your pastor today? Have you prayed for your mate today? Have you prayed for the members of our church today? And, and uh, again, we can go on and on. All the things that we need to be praying for. Have you prayed for our graduates and so forth? Uh, folks, we need to pray. Did you pray about the situations today that are happening in our uh, city? Uh, and again, I, I don't know what's going on. And as we finally, I think, kind of, we kind of got to the point that there was a lot of rumors, basically, that got started and just got blown out of portion. This that kind of... But uh, again, I shouldn't say that because one person did take his life today. So I think it's not funny and that's not a rumor from what I understand. And I hope it is a rumor that maybe I, uh, somebody got it wrong, but it does not sound good at all. And so what am I saying? There's a lot of things happening today, but we need to be praying. And the first thing I hope that when you heard there was a situation going on at uh, uh, what I would call Stockton Field, uh, that you were praying about the situation and we heard of the situation on Madison and 13th Street that you were praying for that. Of course, Chuck and Rose lived just a rock girl from where all this was happening. Uh, we need to pray. So when we hear bad news, it's so easy. Oh, man, that's terrible. That's awful. What is this world coming to? <laughs> uh, I think we to say this world's coming to the devil. It really is. And, and I hate to say it this way, too. It's this, this world's going to hell. And uh, again, don't misunderstand me. I'm not cursing. I'm just saying the things we look at, that's what it definitely indicates. And what I'm saying, when we think of those things, that should cause us to pray for this world, to pray for those that are in leadership, pray for folks to do that which is right, to do that which God would have them to do. So it says praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And so again, sometimes we, we pray ignorantly. And God says that we need to pray in the Spirit. And how many times does that happen that you catch yourself praying in the Spirit? Uh, I'm going to use uh, Richard's friend, Connie. Uh, Sunday, two weeks ago, I think it was, uh, I literally, I got the thing, I said, I know Richard needs to get here to church, and, and I don't know if he becomes God, so he hasn't called me. And Lord, I just pray that 
God, let Connie bring him to church today. And lo and behold, she walks in the door, and I hate to say that, but just like everybody else, when uh, Rhoda heard somebody knocking on the door, they were praying for Peter to be freed from prison, and she heard a knock and went there, and she came back to her. Peter's at the door. I said, no, he's in jail. No, Peter's at the door. And while they were praying, they were praying for him to be freed, and there was Connie. Isn't that neat? So why would they even think that? And again, the Spirit. Isn't that neat how God's Spirit can lead us and direct us? And how many times we don't really know how to pray about a situation, but God's Spirit knows exactly how we should pray, what we should say, and what we should do. So again, reading on in that verse, I'm going to finish it here in a moment. And watching thereunto with all perseverance. So, folks, we need to watch for our own self because it is so easy to backslide. It is so easy to fall by the wayside. It's so easy to get distracted. And it's so easy for other people to get distracted too and get off course. So we need to pray and, and watch for others. That's how we show that we love them. And, and then watch for ourselves and make sure that we head back. And, and folks, I don't know about you. You ever said something you wish you hadn't said? Have you ever thought something you shouldn't have thought? Have you ever heard something that, you know, you don't know if you really heard it right or not. Maybe you hope you heard it wrong. And what I'm saying is we need to watch what we say. We need to watch what we hear. We need to watch what we see and do something about it for God's glory and for his honor. And so very clearly this verse says, watching thereunto with all perseverance. That means don't say, well, I prayed for them last week, so why should I pray for them again? You know, why should I waste my breath praying for them again? You know, I mean, I've prayed and prayed. I, I've been praying for the president to get saved. I've been praying for uh, the, the vice president to get saved. I've been praying for the speaker of the house to get saved. Pray, you know, you go down the list of all the ones you're praying to get saved. And you say, well, I've already prayed for them. <laughs> uh, no, perseverance means we continue to pray. Even if it looks like there's no hope that they would ever get saved, or it looks like there's no hope that things are ever going to change in a good way, continue to persevere, continue in your prayers. And then it says, in supplication for all saints. So be ready to help a brother or sister in Christ. Uh, and uh, sometimes it may be something just as simple as just shaking your hand, looking them in the eyeball and saying, I love you, brother. I love you, sister. And, and let them know that you're really concerned for them. And they can say, uh, God laid this on my heart. And I had to have him today. And then just, uh, uh, he took me by the hand and just grabbed it. And I could feel something in there. Uh, he said, uh, God want me to give that to you. And sure enough, it was a $50 bill. He ready? He didn't owe me any money. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go pay for our dinner with that today. Isn't that great? It's still $25 left over. Can you imagine that? It, what am I trying to say? I, I mean, that was a blessing. It, it made me smile, made me happy. But you know what was so neat? was watching him smile and his wife smile. So <laughs> they were excited. They were able to do something. I didn't know it was $50 that actually, actually they left. And uh, that was very, very exciting to say the least. But sometimes something just that simple. And, and I'm not saying that you need to give somebody $50 or whatever. Uh, but something just to let them know what you're thinking about. And that is such a blessing. And thank you for all the things that Christ has done for us. So supplication for all saints. So, uh, and, and maybe especially for that one that you have a little trouble with. You ever have somebody rub you the wrong way? And, and I know your pastor never rubs you the wrong way. <laughs> thank you for... No, why am I thinking of? I didn't hear a single amen, but anyhow. Well, what I was trying to say, folks, that we all need to pray for each other and let each other know that we love them and do so. And then I think of the call in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 through 12. And what I'm trying to say again is that we're all called to preach, but we're not all called to pastor, okay? And I hope you see the difference there. But notice what it says, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, where was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who had enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. What a blessing that you can be part of the ministry here at Antioch. But when I say the ministry here, I'm talking about the ministry of God. 
that we can be involved in the ministry of God. And again, uh, I'm excited about being able to work in the ministry here, and I trust that you are too, that you can have a part in the ministry where God has set us to be, and that we can be faithful. And that's what Paul said. He said, so thankful that Jesus Christ considers me a faithful servant. And so in your mind, in your heart, would Jesus say, hey, thank you for being a faithful servant? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Would he say that of you or of me? And then God entrusts us and say, uh, to preach the, the message, to preach that Jesus says. But he also not only entrusts us, but he enables us. He gives us the words to say at just the right time so that we can share the good news. He also uh, employs us. I guess in one sense, I'm never unemployed because I've always got something to do. Even if I don't have a job per se where I'm getting a salary, uh, I'm always employed by the Lord. He's always got something for me to do, especially to preach and to share the good news. Then I think of the, the message of preaching. And again, I know we've already hit on this somewhat, but when I think of preaching the gospel, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, and this is the a great commission in the book of Mark, but it says this, and he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. How many times today have you heard something said along those lines? And what I've tried to emphasize is that God has not chosen any particular race or favored any particular race. And I know some might say, well, the Jews are God's favorite people. Um, God did choose them to do his work. But isn't it exciting that God has chosen us also to be involved in his work? And that it makes no difference what your background might be. That's really referred to the Jew and the Greek both. And the Greek was basically the language that everybody else spoke, and then the Jews had a unique language to themselves. But notice, as we think about preaching, the Word says that we're to do it to every creature. That's the reason we sent out so much money. Uh, last month, our little church here sent $24,000 to missions worldwide. I don't know about y'all, but doesn't that sound like a little bit of money? A little bit of money, I mean, twenty-four thousand. So uh, I'm thankful that our church can do that, and especially in this day and age, that we're able to send that out. And that's to, I believe, a total of about twenty-four missionaries. And uh, so I'm thankful. And some of that was uh, some things that happened, and we kind of got back on some of our uh, giving that was supposed to be sent to the missionaries. So we got caught up with it, and that's what it was literally twenty-four thousand dollars. So isn't that unbelievable? Uh, I think that's exciting that our church is capable of doing that. And, uh, but anyhow, uh, and, and it took some real faith to send out some checks like that for that total amount. But again, thank God that we can do that. And how many people will be saved as a result of that money being saved? And how many uh, were reached as a result of that money that our church sent out to others to help them in their ministry? And again, their ministry is part of our ministry. And I hope that you see that and realize that. So again, when you get to missions, it definitely goes to a worthy cause. And we don't keep any of that money back. It goes to the missionary. And uh, so we're, we're thankful that they can uh, know that Antioch is going to send the check that is coming and uh, we get it to it. So we see the gospel also uh, in its precepts in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and those verses 1 through 4. And again, this is very, very important because it gives us a summary of, of what the gospel is. And again, just how important it is for us to share these basic thoughts. It says here, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached unto you, this is Paul speaking, which also ye have received, and where ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And so here we have the Gospel, if you please, just summarized in a real brief form what it is. And God makes it very clear uh, that we're to share the good news that Jesus lived, he died, and was buried, he rose again from the grave. And again, I'm so thankful that he was willing to die for me and to die for you. When I think of the gospel and this prospect, uh, 
John 3, 16, immediately comes to mind. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. Uh, can you lose everlasting life? Folks, well, God gave it to you. You can't lose it. And so again, it's not on me working to keep it. And, and I, I want to do things for the Lord. I can never pay him back. And you can try all you want to, but you can never pay him back. But at least we can do something for him that has done so much for us. And then the gospel also is the power of God. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm so glad God included all of us, as I said a moment ago. But it is the power of God. God can transform a lost person into a saved person. God can transform a person that's headed for hell to heaven. Wow. I, I'm glad it doesn't work the other way. Wouldn't that be frightening to think that God could say, okay, I've given you everlasting life, but I'm sending you to hell now. <laughs> that's never going to happen. Folks, I'm so excited about what we had in our salvation. And then to preach the word. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, it says, Preach the word, the instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all our suffering and doctrine. So God says that we need to be ready always to share with someone the good saying. We never know what's going to happen from day to day. And so it's so important that we share now because we don't know if we're going to have a chance to share with that person again. And you might say, but they're a relative or this, that, the neighbor. Or the, you know, and you might say, all oh, these different things to excuse yourself from what's them now. But we really don't know how long people die. Well, as sad as I think just a couple of hours ago, there was a suicide that took place just a couple blocks from here, folks. How sad. I mean, it was so close. And when I say so close, uh, I've got a knee of an arm now. And there would have been a time that maybe I could have thrown to that house where this happened in, in two shots. And now they're probably taking ten times throwing something to hit that house. But I mean, it's real close to what I'm trying to say. And um, folks, how sad. Yeah, I think how many times we've knocked on that door. And um, again, we can share it. We need to be ready because we never know what's going to happen. So this is to stabilize the saints when we talk to them about God's Word. And again, it produces faith for the walk of the, of the saints so if they can walk and become more like Christ. It helps us to have fruit that abounds to uh, Christ's glory instead of our own. But we also have freedom if you please in producing uh, worship that comes from us, from our heart as people see the differences that have been made. I see the method of preaching, the essence of true preaching, expounds upon the scriptures. And again, if somebody's preaching and they don't use the scriptures, then uh, uh, the scriptures are so important that we share exalting of all things. When we preach, it should exalt Jesus Christ. It shouldn't exalt ourselves. It should exalt Him. And of course, Christ he may exalt us as we share His word, because of the way that we do it, that we have the right spirit. And then exhorting the saints, that means building and encouraging. the Folks, uh, we all need to be encouraged from time to time. No question about it. I can't help but think that the young man took his life here just a few moments ago. Uh, that maybe if he had some encouragement somewhere, he might still be alive. If somebody just said something to him, you know, and again. And then, when we think about preaching, it should expose sin. And I, I trust that as your pastor that you feel like I do expose sin, that I do talk about what sin is. And I try to discourage everybody from sin because I want God's fullest blessing to be upon you. And I don't want the devil to use you as his puppet. Uh, I want you to be used by God. I, I, and folks, when you're used by the devil, you're being abused, okay? But when you're being used by God, Wow, that brings glory to him. And that's what we should all want to do. Again, I think of the example of preaching in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verses 1 through 5. We see the importance of the example of preaching. And so as we look at this example, 
Notice what it says here in God's Word. It said, And brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And folks, I, I love when somebody said something this morning. Said, Pastor, I, I want you to know I, I, I really felt God working in the services today. And that's a blessing because it, it tells me that I've been a funnel from heaven. And that God has funneled his blessings through my preaching, again, my preaching always wanted to be that which would bring honor to the Lord. And so as we look at this, these verses here again, we see Paul's declaration. He says that I'm preaching the gospel. No matter what happens, I'm going to preach it. And then he went ahead and, and he made it clear that he was determined, that he had a determination to preach no matter what happened to him, no matter how many times he got beat up, how many times he got cussed or whatever, he was going to continue preaching. And then verse 4, the demonstration. He demonstrated that God was working through him in this preaching, and that God was able to use him in a wonderful way so that people could see that God was in Paul. And then we see his desire. His desire, according to verse 5, was that people would come to accept God as their Savior, that they would accept his Son, and then accept the power that God had for them. So the last thought is the must of preaching. If we don't share the gospel, who's going to do it? If we don't publish it, who's going to do it? And, and again, what I'm saying is, there's some people, the only time they're ever going to hear or have a chance to hear the gospel is from you. Whether you be a neighbor or a brother or relative uh, or someone that they work with, it's going to have to come from you. Maybe even a stranger that just crosses your path. But preaching is the only plan God has for Bring in sinners to salvation. Uh, if a person's waiting for an angel to drop out of heaven and say, you need to repent and trust Jesus as your Savior now or else, uh, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It happened for Paul, but that's a different circumstance, a different time. And we know that God used them, no question. But also for bringing saints to stabilization. It's so sad that I meet Christians, and I believe they're Christians, but I meet them all the time, and they just say, well, I used to go to church, but, and usually they're about something like this. They'll say, uh, well, the preacher said some things, and he hurt my feelings. Okay. And the thing I wonder, was he preaching the truth, and he hurt your feelings? Uh, was he saying what God told him to say, and it hurt your feelings? Because God made it clear that he wasn't happy with what you were doing. You know, I, I don't know. There's two sides. I'm not to say three sides of every story. There's his side, her side, and then the truth. Okay. But why? We need the church. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. It says it this way. And again, our last verses for the night. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, that means mature man, unto the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And those verse 16, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual work and in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And so we see that Christ wants to help us Basically, become more like him. And I can't think of a better example uh, than the Lord Jesus Christ and what he said for you and what he said for me. 
And wouldn't it be neat if we could all compare notes and go, wow, uh, I really can become more like Jesus. Yes, you really are becoming more like Jesus. And for people to see that and to be encouraged along those lines, and again, I'm so thankful that God hasn't given us something that's not possible, but he's given us something that we can all do for him. And, and that God can make us better. We can have a better day tomorrow than we have today. And we can have a better day the next day. We can have a better week this next week than we had last week. But it's all up to us. I don't know what you might be going through. We have so much happening in our house. Um, our hot water heater went out, flooded the basement, and uh, we got a lot of stuff in our basement from Florida. <coughs> So it's really neat. You have to wait for water to get to things that we keep in storage in the basement. And um, we finally got us a new heater, uh, hot water heater today. We went and picked it up and got in just before church started. Um, we had to do something because uh, we were uh, in hot. We weren't in hot water, okay? <laughs> and so now, hopefully, Lord will, we'll be in hot water soon. But at the same time, two days ago, our air conditioner went out too. So, wow, we're sweating a whole lot, and we can't take a nice warm shower. We take really fast cold showers, you know. And so that's going on. And, and anyhow, we just go on all the things that happen. And thank the Lord, we finally got uh, one of the other cars fixed. And so we got it running out. Thank the Lord for that. But what I'm saying, there's just so many things going on just so fast. It's so easy to get discouraged. Uh, and, and folks, did I tell you that the hot water heater? By the time we get through doing all the plumbing and everything, with us doing the work, I say to us, okay, Levi doing the work. It's $1,980 some odd dollars, uh, almost $2,000. Okay, and hopefully we're supposed to get back $400 in rebates, but we don't shop at Menards that much, so anyhow. But I'm saying a lot of things can happen just like that. Uh, and it, it wouldn't take much to get discouraged and get a little hot and then call it, you know, whatever. And we go on and on, all the lines are going on. Uh, but folks, uh, God knows what he's doing. And as those things take place, and I think Martha, she shared with you, she got to be that woman of Christ. Uh, she didn't want to work this summer. Uh, she was ready for break. She's still recovering from surgery. And she said, Lord, just lay it on my heart. Well, the woman got saved because she went to work this summer. Isn't that great? I mean, again, God knows what he's doing. So just trust him. I don't know if, uh, if we'll see someone else get saved. Uh, all the things are happening with us right now. <laughs> but uh, it, it's exciting to see. And uh, I want you to know that so that we never have any problems. We never have anything like that happen. Uh, I got my electric bill last month, and uh, it's, it's done on a schedule. And normally our bill is $220 a month, which I think is high. But this last bill was $529 with no explanation why they had gone up so high. Wow. And according to them, that's what we're going to pay every month, uh, at least till the end of the year. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but that's a lot of money, folks. And yeah, there's, there's eight people living in our house, but still, uh, that's a lot of money. You know, and I go on with my water bill has reached almost $200 several times here in the last several months. So, uh, folks, we, uh, we're not exempt from problems, okay? And just that Job went through so many lines, well, we didn't think that, well, I shouldn't have to suffer because I'm a Christian. I'm a preacher. I should never have to suffer. <laughs> God knows what he's doing. And if we keep the right attitude and right spirit, we get to see God do some wonderful lines. And so, anyhow, and I share not to get you to feel sorry for me or whatever, uh, but just let you know that as a pastor, we still have everything that everybody else faces. It happens to us too, okay? I wish I could, I never have any money problems, <laughs> but God takes care of us. He really does. So all that said, uh, we need to preach and share the good news that Jesus saves. And sometimes when things aren't going right, and they're not the way we would schedule it, but the way we would want it to be, then that's when we need to really be ready to do something. So people say, wow, all that happened to him, and he still talked to me about Jesus? <laughs> I 
that's what we need to do. Just stand in front of you no matter what. Would you stand right now as we begin our invitation? Lord, thank you for this time we can share your word. Thank you again for loving us. And thank you for not giving us what we deserve. <coughs> Lord, when I think of what I deserve, oh, I'm so thankful that I'm going to heaven. And uh, Lord, not because of my goodness, but because of your goodness. Thank you for loving me, even when I'm so unlovely. And uh, Lord, that's true of all of us, that you love us even though you know us, and you know the thoughts in our heart, and you still love us. Thank you, God. And help us to be faithful to preach the word, instant in season and out of season. That refers to when things are comfortable, when things are good, and then when things aren't good, when things are going wrong, to continue to be faithful, sharing the good news. And so, Lord, we pray now to just bless our folks. And uh, if there's someone that doesn't know you as a Savior that's watching this program right now, we pray that they'll pray this simple childlike prayer to say, God, please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart and become my Savior so that I can go to heaven and be with you. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray these things. Amen. <laughs>